Hello, and welcome to the school board meeting of April 9th. I want to um, let people know that this is the school board meeting. If you're here at the Conservation co uh, Commission meeting, that's downstairs. So if you're here for the school board meeting, we're not used to having such a spectacular audience, so thanks for being here. Um, if you'll please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Item one, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Item one, uh, I would like to recommend the the NECAP report to the May school board meeting. Okay, that's 5C. Item two, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion? Yes, I, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, I move to approve the <laughs> School board minutes uh, as listed in the packet under item two. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? I guess I just March is, was a busy month. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm hard of hearing tonight. <laughs> we have six agendas. All right. Um, do we have comments from student representatives? I'll start off. Okay, no. Um, so the the third quarter has recently ended, um, and the juniors recently had their um, their science exams, uh, their uh, state mandated science exams. Um, also, uh, the STP for seniors is kind of it's kind of um, coming along. Uh, we've We've now had to uh, send in our, our ideas and have, have them approved. Um, some people obviously haven't done that yet, but uh, we were supposed to. Um, uh, and we're kind of starting to coordinate with our, with our SDP uh, person. Um, also, uh, this is just on a, on a separate note, I actually noticed that the, the elevator in the school, uh, the inspection on that is, is up, and we, we actually have a, we have a number of uh, like students who actually need to use the elevator, so obviously would want to have any liability issues there. So you might want to get that checked. Also, it's generally regarded as like a kind of like sketchy elevator; it moves very slowly, um, and so so that might need to be something that needs to be checked on. Um, Abby. Um. <clears throat> okay. Well, other than that, there's not really much going on. Fourth quarter started. Um, so everyone's just wrapping up their classes for the year and um, the juniors and sophomores and freshmen uh, passed in their uh, class schedule requests for next year. Um, seniors are finishing up hearing from colleges, which is really exciting. Um, and May 1st, I think, is the deadline for um, committing. And other than that, um, I've also been uh, notified that some people might not know what the SDP is. It stands for Senior Transition Project, and it's a, it's a period uh, from May 20th to May 31st where um, uh, seniors will go out into the community and er, go uh, into a field that they're considering um, pursuing in, in college or further and, and kind of exploring what that career might have to offer them. Um, if they were to, to pursue that. So, and then there's a presentation that we do at the end of it. It's, it's a, from what I've heard, it's a really um, enriching experience. Um, so just, if anybody didn't know what that was. Oh, also prom is coming up, so everyone in school is buzzing about it from ping pong balls and lockers to cakes and they're very interesting ways that people have asked other people. <laughs> but um, it's what, Casino Royale themed this year? And it's somewhere in Portland. <laughs> I hope they get better directions by the time it comes. <laughs> I'll let you know if you're interested in, you know, coming. It's, it's I, at, don't have, I don't have a date, so I'm It's sorry. at the Portland Club, I believe. Hmm? That's it? Isn't that in Palmer? 
Yeah, I'm not really sure. I've heard it's at the Portland Club. That's all, that's all the information I've got on that. Okay. Are there any questions for the student reps? No, okay. Moving on then to um, item four, comments from the public on agenda items. Are there, is anyone here to speak on agenda items? Seeing none, uh, then communications, 5A. Uh, I think we have Reese McFarland here, and Senator Millett is here to present a legislative sentiment. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see just you. tremendous Welcome to be back, back here, everybody. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I miss this chamber. <laughs> um, so I'm pleased to be here tonight to honor the accomplishments of uh, Reese McFarland. And um, Reese, if you'd like to come up and join me. So um, we passed a legislative sentiment, and it says the following. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing Reese McFarland of Cape Elizabeth, a sophomore at Cape Elizabeth High School, remarkable, who has won the 2013 Class B State Golf Championship. He was named the Maine Sunday Telegram All-Star Player of the Year. We extend our congratulations and best wishes to Reese on this achievement and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 126th legislature and the people of the state of Maine, given this 27th day of March 2013 at the state capital, Augusta, Maine. And it's signed by Justin L. Alfond, President of the Senate, Mark W. Eve, Speaker of the House, and it was sponsored by myself and co-sponsored by Representative Hammond of South Portland and Representative Monaghan Derrick of Cape Elizabeth. So congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Reese. Yes, and I would just like to say that um, I am expecting a um, large group of um, fabulous speech team members, along with the superintendent up in Augusta, to receive their sentiment. And I'm working um, to try to uh, arrange the same thing for the girls' swim team. So uh, it's quite, we have quite the uh, community to celebrate, and uh, it's one of the biggest joys that I have as a senator for this district. So thank you for allowing me to do this this evening. Thank you, Rebecca. It's always good to have you back. I know. Next, we have Varsity Girls Swimming and Diving Team recognition. Mr. Shedd? They've actually already received this, but Mr. Thorak said I need to bring it as a good prop. <laughs> so, Mr. Thor uh, I'm just going to put it back. Mr. Mr. Thorak uh, had to cover the Western Maine Conference Citizenship Award Banquet tonight, so he asked me to speak in his place. And if I can get all the girls to come, sort of come over here and line up sort of this way, and that way the school board members can see you, and I think the public can see you. So these are some of the members of the state champion girls swimming and dive team from Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, and Mr. Raymond told me, he gave me the information to share. So here it is. The Cape Elizabeth girls swimming and diving team had another outstanding season. Not only were they class A state champions, by the way, those of you familiar with the way we operate, we are basically a class B school in terms of population, but in two uh, events, soccer and swimming historically we have petitioned to compete against the largest schools in the state uh, so these girls are the champion of the, the division which includes the largest schools in the state um, not only were they class a state champions but they were also southwestern main champions as well as undefeated during the dual meet season the two team was led by seniors l richards who is here and Charlotte Sawyer, who is here, uh, but it is not individuals that made this team successful. And that's the real takeaway point about this team. This team's success was in its depth. While not winning, now this is amazing, while not winning, 
a single individual event at the state meet, through the sheer numbers of talented swimmers that they had entered into the meet in 31 individual events, and the strong relay teams finishing first in state record time in the 200 medley relay, and that's Hannah Holman, Sadie Stiles, Sydney White, and Caroline Harriman. They were able to amass 282 points to Brunswick's 268. Out of the 31 individual entrants, 23 of those swims scored points, which mean those sw means, means that those swimmers came in the top 16 in those events, far more than any other team. It was a total team victory that was well earned by a great group of young women. So congratulations to the state champion Cape Elizabeth High School swim and dive team. Great job. Thank you. Congratulations. Well done. Yes. I would just like to thank all of you for the hard work you put in for uh, uh, swimming and diving. I know you work, um, you know, after school hours and have a lot of support from your family. So thank you for your hard work. And uh, Reese. Uh, Thank you for your hard work. I know you don't know me, but I remember driving by your old house in Belfield, and I'd always say, who is that kid out there on that farm <laughs> land hitting into a red uh, tee in the wintertime? So I also remember you in, in the summers. You were the only out there on the course. So um, thank you for your hard work and your dedication. I'm very happy it, it paid off to you. And thank you for your parents for, for supporting you. And good luck uh, with your golf in the future. Uh, so on from athletics to item 5D, full day kindergarten. Uh, okay. Meredith is going to power up. Okay, so thank you. Um, as we discussed during a budget workshop, we are proposing a full day kindergarten pilot for the upcoming school year. And I'm gonna run through some slides just to give a little bit of background and then we'll take some time to answer questions and for discussion. So first, um, full day kindergarten um, in America, the movement really started in the 70s. And in the 70s, most children were in half day programs and a small percentage were in full day programs across the country. And in 2001, we saw that trend really had reversed. Um, you probably don't need my reminder that there's a school board meeting. Um, there aren't any recent studies about those numbers, but based on information from articles and things that I've read recently, I would project that those numbers are considerably higher. Um, and for lots of reasons. Our society has changed in the last 20 years, and so has education. Um, so you see more working families, more single parent families, and um, expectations for student learning have also changed, so a lot of school districts have moved forward with full day programs. Why full day kindergarten? Well, these are some, again, some research um, based rationales. Parents favor full day kindergarten program. It reduces the number of transitions for their children in a typical day. And um, several studies have shown greater lasting academic and social benefit from participation in full day programs than in half day programs. And there are more of those studies every day. Um, benefits. 
more opportunities for teachers to look at um, individual needs and meet those needs, more opportunities for small group learning, and you'll see that later when I show um, a couple of schedule models. Children are engaged in a broader range of learning experiences. You have more time for dramatic play, for building in music and movement into your, your instruction. Time for more in-depth exploration of the curriculum, and because a teacher is now interacting with fewer children and fewer families, better opportunities to build those relationships. Again, fewer transitions for kindergartners, an easier transition typically to first grade. Um, again, research-based, there are fewer special education referrals and fewer remedial needs typically moving forward. Better assessment practices because, again, you have the increased time with individual children and overall more positive behavioral experiences for children. Why here and now? Um, in our October Community Forum, it was the top issue raised by participants. Um, we have a sizable achievement gap. That's not new information to this board, but for students in Cape Elizabeth with disabilities and for our students who receive free and reduced lunch, they are not achieving as well as their, their peers who don't qualify for free and reduced lunch or who aren't identified for special education. Um, a decade ago when the district looked at the possibility of full day kindergarten, it was going to mean an addition, um, a six classroom addition, another story potentially over the existing kindergarten wing or the kindergarten wing that was being built at that time. Our recent facility study says, no, you probably don't need to do that. It shows that there is room within the footprint of the building to offer full day kindergarten. Our projected class sizes allow for um, movement of a teacher uh, next year to provide this opportunity to two classes of students on a pilot basis. And our 10 year enrollment projections show continuing decline in our overall district enrollment, meaning we'll have space available and we'll potentially have the staffing available for no additional cost. When um, Cape Elizabeth staff got together in November and talked about kindergarten, these were some of the items that they um, identified. They anticipate that there would be improved outcome for students across all areas, academic, social, emotional, and linguistic. And again, that's backed up by um, research from across the country. They anticipate that it will result in a positive impact for students in first grade and subsequently in their years through school, and an increased ability for us as a district to predict the needs of our students. Full day access to interventions and instructional support. Again, a smoother transition to first grade. Improved structure and pace of the day. Um, back to that achievement gap piece, a more equitable playing field for working in middle class families to have their children in school for full day. As you know, we receive a number of students every year in first grade who've had the opportunity to be in full day kindergarten programs. And it builds a more inclusive community for kindergarten students, teachers, and families. So, logistically speaking, how would a pilot work? Um, right now we're looking at two full day classes and four half day classes, rather than the current model of six half day classes. There is a special education, I'm talking much too fast apparently. There is a special education classroom in the kindergarten wing, um, and that program and those services would be moved to another area within the building to allow the four kindergarten classrooms to be in the same corridor. It's the same curriculum just more time to deliver the instruction. We would project buying necessary materials for the additional classroom out of remaining FY13 funds. And supplies are really budgeted for children. We anticipate that we're still going to have this is roughly the same number of kindergarten students for next year. And for next year, there would be no change to transportation services. Now the downside um, is that there would be a lottery system. Because we'd only be offering two full day classes, we wouldn't be able to accommodate, we anticipate, all of those um, children whose families might believe that their children would benefit from a full day program. So we would be asking um, parents who are registering their children to let us know if they want their children to be in a full day program, and we would put them into a lottery. And I plugged in dates here just as sort of a guidepost, but those are not definitive dates. Um, but we would ask parents to let us know by a date certain, for example, May 1st, and then we would, after the budget vote in mid-May, announce the results of the lottery, I'm again anticipating sort of by, by mid to late May. And if parents um, find out that their child has not been selected, they could have the option to put their child on a wait list if a slot were to open later. <coughs> this is 
a sample schedule of what a typical kindergarten day looks like under our existing half-day model. Um, you can see it's pretty compact. They're here um, from 8.40 to 11.20. They have to fit in snack time. In the winter, they have to put in, fit in taking on and off their winter gear. We're glad it's spring now. Um, and although they get better at it, those things take up a fair amount of time. You see that there is limited time available for the literacy work that we do and for the math work that we, and for the math instruction that we provide. And limited time for teachers to work individually with um, children or for small group activities. Oh, that's really small. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, for those of you who have slides, you might be able to read through it. But in a full day, you see a period of time for a morning meeting that can be slightly expanded to wor work on those pro-social skills that are so important for young learners. Time for a large group session, which, which typically is sort of reading literacy based, it might be math based depending on the day. Um, an extended period of time to really work on literacy, project showing an hour there. Um, time for recess and snack. Period of time for writing. Another extended block of time for math instruction. Centers, which are, again, very developmentally based um, programming for kindergarten, where students can work at their own pace. A teacher might be at a particular center to provide targeted support for students. Children can be moving among centers. Lunchtime. Um, that shows, uh, this sample schedule shows a visit to the library, perhaps, on a Monday. Um, some time for free choice. Uh, another recess time and time at the end of the day to regroup with students and wrap up the day. So this might not be a September schedule, but as you get the year going and children build those habits of writing and becoming more independent, this is what most of your year would, might look like. So again, this amount of time to fit in all that curriculum versus this amount of time, which again provides for fewer transitions and um, more time to really deliver personalized instruction. Next steps. So first, we need to communicate with parents of incoming kindergartners about a full day program option and lottery process and deadlines. The kindergarten team, and some of them are here today, would um, be spending some time visiting other full day kindergarten programs. We'd make sure the necessary materials and supplies were all in place. And we would, uh, it doesn't mean schedule development and teacher planning time, but it means you would develop a schedule and have teacher planning time um, to get ready. And then I think the, the next question on people's mind is, is where does this go from here? And, and I think that's the question this community will need to think about. To do that, you need to evaluate how successful um, the pilot is and obtain feedback from parents and teachers about how that's going, as well as looking at outcomes for students. And you need to consider the space options within the building, um, staffing options and needs, um, before any decisions are made about full expansion. And I do think that as we move forward, if we are continuing to see the enrollment decline as projected, space and staffing are going to be workable. Um, you know, those aren't huge considerations. They're huge considerations, but I don't anticipate that they're going to um, be huge obstacles for us as a district. I also think that if you think about the outcomes for students over time, that it is reasonable for us to expect that as this program is fully implemented, we will see reductions in special education referrals, for example, the decreased need for literacy support for students moving forward through the elementary school years and beyond. So, questions, comments, discussion? Questions? David? Um, just two. Uh, you mentioned some of the benefits being for special education and literacy and so forth, but my understanding, or I should ask, isn't there studies that show the earlier that we educate our children, the better that all children do throughout you know, elementary school, middle school, and high school? So this actually benefits everybody, not just? Yes. Uh. <laughs> yes, and in fact, fewer. Uh, thank you for saying that, David. And, and again, in reality, what happens now is that because we have this gap where some children have different experiences in their households before they come to school or may have um, preschool experiences or others may not have preschool experiences, they come into kindergarten in different places and enter first grade with different prep levels of preparation. And when you start first grade behind, it's very difficult to catch up. 
the sooner we can put services in place and provide support to children and give them a full, well-rounded curriculum that includes instruction in the socialization skills and the academic and the language skills, the better, they're, the better served they are moving forward. Um, I actually have three. The second one was, uh, just to emphasize, one of the things we noticed when we looked at our results of testing that, I don't know what to, uh, how to categorize it, but there were, whether they were uh, middle, lower, working class people, that was where we needed to improve the most. And this thing will help those people, uh, those children, uh, to a significant degree because it gives them an, an equal, you know, start in life, a more equal start in life than what they're getting now. I believe it will. I believe it will give them a greater start when we can offer kindergarten to all children, but it's a step in that direction, certainly. And then lastly, um, this is mainly for the public, uh, my understanding is that we're able to do this through existing space, existing furniture, existing staff, so it's literally not going to cost us increase our expenditures or our costs uh, to have this program at all, I mean, increase our costs at all to have this program. We anticipate that we're going to have roughly the same number of, be serving roughly the same number of children that we currently serve. We aren't adding any additional staff to do this, and we think it's a more efficient use of resources moving forward. So it, it doesn't increase what we charge the taxpayer to have this program? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to make a statement. I think one thing I want to make clear, and I'm only speaking for myself, is uh, I think um, the hurdle is not going to be, for me, does it require incremental resources? Every year the school board looks and says what are our needs and how do we best allocate those resources? And I think if you don't live in Cape Elizabeth, you would be shocked to learn that a school system such as ours that has such broad community support does not have full day kindergarten. You know, I think if we didn't have full day third grade, community citizens would say, well, what do you mean you have half day third grade? I'd say the exact same question. Why in the world do you have half-day kindergarten? I use medicine as an example, um, not because I'm ill frequently, but just because it <laughs> lends itself, you know, preventative medicine. You know, the quicker you identify something, the greater the opportunity. And, you know, I think that it's backwards. Not to have a full-day kindergarten is, um, you know, is baffling to me. And I've been uh, arguing for this for several years, and I think, um, I don't feel the school board has to convince people that it's not going to cost more money. Of course, if you do a full day kindergarten, you're going to have that reallocate resources. But every year we look at what the needs are and the best way to allocate those resources. So um, as part of the future consideration, I think we need to look at how we best use these resources. But I'm not willing to say the hurdle is it's not going to have an impact on the budget because uh, every program we look at, if we held that same argument, we add staff some years, we subtract. So my argument is if we can justify it on an educational basis, then we have to find the resources and allocate it um, as such. And I do um, realize for many families the lottery system isn't the best option. I've already heard from citizens and we, we're, we're, we're listening and we understand that but it's the best way for us to transition and to pilot the program. So thank you for being patient, um, and hopefully, uh, you know, in the future there will there'll be a full-day kindergarten, but uh, we need to take it one step at a time. So that, uh, I don't have any questions at, at this moment. <laughs> Does anyone else have questions or speeches? Because, no. We haven't posted it yet. I mean, certainly um, Kelly and I have had some discussions. P Portland has a lottery system for um, some of its choice programs, and Kelly has direct experience with that. There are a number of models for lottery systems that exist in schools across the country that have um, had some similar struggles. Most now are actually for choice programs, like programs within schools, not really for full-day kindergarten, because as Michael pointed out earlier, most districts um, already have that in place. In fact, most of them are working on preschool. Um, <laughs> That's a topic for a later time, um, but, but we'll be communicating that. That would be a next step from here. I think we wanted to identify this as a step forward during the budget process and then take time to be able to fully articulate the rationale and, and how this might move forward, and then we'll be communicating to parents about the lottery process within the next week or two or a couple of weeks. Um, 
as David always says, uh, this is mostly for the public. I know that everything you do is very thoughtful and that I think one word that a um, citizen wrote was, did she use barbaric? Um, uncivilized. Uncivilized. We know um, it's anxiety producing to do just um, two classes of kindergarten. So, but I thank you for delving deep into the um, research to make it as civilized as possible. Um, the system because I know that's it's an anxiety producing for parents um, The other question I wanted to ask was how is community service their extended day program? Um, is this a time to inform more parents about that program? Russell and I had a conversation about that uh, last week or the week before I guess um, in depth and um, they will continue to offer the extended care program and I would agree I think that's something to make parents aware of as we go through the lottery system that if they aren't selected that may be an alternative for some folks for child care but I also know that families um, typically have found other resources in the community and uh, you know again as Michael stated this this isn't ideal perhaps but I think it is a prudent way to, to test this out and move it forward and find out if this is something that has full community support and if it's going to be effective for our children in our community. And uh, we wouldn't be bringing it forward if we didn't anticipate that it would be. Elizabeth. I've also received lots of emails about this and so I will pass on a question from a parent which has to do more with the evaluation process of its, um, we'll call it success. I don't, I don't love that word but, um, and this, this parent has a, a child not entering kindergarten this year, but is concerned about next year, and it is, um, do we have any thoughts about, you know, evaluating how, how where we go from here? Um, this particular parent had a concern about, okay, this is the pilot year, next year it's gonna be all full day kindergarten all the way, and uh, that person had a concern more than a, um, a wish for all day kindergarten, so I was just mm -hmm. curious if, I mean, it's so far out to project, and I totally understand that. But. I mean, I think that's absolutely part of what you have to evaluate. I think we're going to know this year as we move forward with this process how many parents or roughly what percentage of parents are interested in having their children participate in a full day program and that's certainly going to help guide our thinking for next year. But the other piece that will help guide our thinking for next year is direct feedback and and results. You know, we, we already do kindergarten screenings, we already do kindergarten assessment, we'll be able to take a look at that and say, well, what do we see different um, in the benchmarks and the results for children who are in the full day program and children who are in the half day program. So I think that's, again, that's important information for us in terms of making decisions prior to the next budget process. Just one follow-up question. Uh, is it, uh, if you looked at that study, and I imagine that would just be one consideration, because my understanding is you may not see the results, you know, instantaneously, or it may depend on who happens to be in the half day. So, um, you know, maybe we could glean some information from that. But given the history of educational studies tend to be longitudinal and longer, uh, many more years, is that something that we think we'll have a definitive answer on, or it would be more informative? Uh I think we'll have some local information that will be valuable um, in guiding our thinking. Will it be longitudinal, qualitative, or quantitative data? No, it won't. We'll be able, will we be able to look at here are how our students, um, the results of their assessments from screenings that took place in the spring or early fall, and the results of the assessments that take place in the winter? Yes, we're going to be able to look at the outcomes for those children and compare them to the outcomes for children in half-day programs. Is that perfectly scientific? No, because it's a small sample size. We know what the primary research base tells us, but we're also going to have some indicators about how it's working locally. Thank you. David? I want to make a short speech in response to Michael's. Uh, I'm going to agree with you, Michael. I, I think it's essential that as a community we offer uh, kindergarten uh, services and education not only to it, it's appropriate all the all the studies show that the earlier you educate kids the better off all do over time I just think this is an instance where we get to have our cake and eat it too which is we get to offer something at no additional cost and therefore we're showing we're doing what we think is necessary we're doing it in the most efficient manner possible but I agree with you the first and 
foremost criteria is we're doing what's best for our children. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Okay. Be right back. The next item is 5E, Retirements and Resignations. Uh, we've received a notice of retirement from Paul Casey, who's a middle school language arts teacher and has been with the district for a number of years. So that is the only retirement I have received. Thank you. And the superintendent's report. OK. Can we have to move to approve the waiver of a provision? It's in it's later. So David, I'm going to let you start and announce the results of the North Shore Science League competition held today at Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, thank you, Meredith. <laughs> um, I, I went to the, to the um, uh, Maine, I believe, is the only state that competes in the uh, North, North Shore Suburban Science League, I think is its technical name, which is en encompasses a lot of much larger high schools in the North Shore of Ma of Massachusetts. Uh, we normally travel down to Massachusetts to compete. This is the first time we've ever had the finals uh, up here um, uh, this year. I attended it today, and I have to tell you, it was fascinating. Uh, there was a huge number of kids, uh, uh, a great, diverse, great diversity of kids. Um, I was also pleasantly surprised by the large percentage of young women who were participating in the Science League. And it was, it was a really fun, interesting, fascinating event. I could barely understand anything that they were doing, but they knew it. And the result is that um, I, I did promise Dr. Gritt I would announce that uh, Cape Elizabeth has won the league again this year. I don't know if it's the fourth year in a row, but it's pretty amazing considering it's 20 plus Massachusetts schools, quite a bit larger, all of them quite a bit larger than ours. and. Uh, Dr. Red's team uh, has consistently done extremely well and won again for this year. And if you pardon my correction, I think you meant to say that Cape Elizabeth is the only high school outside of the state of Massachusetts that participates. Is there a, is there a New Hampshire? No, I, what did I say? You said Maine is the only state that participates, but it's, it's generally a well, Massachusetts. Well, uh, I must have had a brain cloud then. Uh, Maine, uh, Cable is the only Maine school that competes the only Maine school in the Massachusetts that. League. I told Thank you, you there's too much science for me. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, and I think that's because the um, school board team lost in the World Affairs Council <laughs> Trivia Night competition on Sunday. Excuse me, and we Jeff and I were part of that team, so we are happy to accept our defeat along with the members of the school board who we, joined us in a brave, me. brave competition. Excuse me, we came in fourth. <laughs> we came in fourth behind the senior boys um, who were the first place finishers. No, second. <laughs> oh, they, oh, they finished second? Oh, that's right. Well, two ahead of us. <laughs> And don't they enjoy it. <laughs> so congratulations to them. It was a great evening and um, raised some money for the World Affairs Council. Congratulations also to Nat Jordan, who was the runner-up in the state spelling bee held a couple of weeks ago. Uh, let's see. I learned um, last week that the town is um, giving the school department $5,000 from the easement for the parking or the entryway to the high school. And so we have some discretion about where we would like to place that funds. And my recommendation would be that we use that to purchase kindergarten materials, if that is agreeable to the board. Thumbs up. That's it. Um, can you explain that? <laughs> so if you remember, <laughs> there's a business that has purchased property in front of the high school. Right. And as part of the agreement with the town to purchase that property, they had to, there's an easement to access the driveway 
and there was a fee for that easement, and the town council has donated that fee to the school department. And the amount of that fee is $5,000, which can be used with the discretion of the school department. And my recommendation is that we use it for kindergarten materials. Well, that's, that's very generous of the town council. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is there any discussion on the recommendation? Is that a one-time fee? Or? It's a one-time fee. Yeah, charge them that For which we are extremely grateful <laughs> to leave. I say they have use it over and over. There are, there are continuing easements, but this is a one-time payment. Yeah. Hmm. We'll take it. Um, yeah. Seeing no objection to your proposal, I think it has the support of the board. Thank you. Monday which was only yesterday, was um, our last book group day for the school year for staff professional development. And we've, again, been working um, K-12 on the topic of literacy. So staff were asked to fill out a survey at the conclusion of that, and we'll be reviewing that survey to help guide our professional development work moving forward. There's also Special Olympics meet was hosted recently um, here in Cape Elizabeth and the pool, and our athletes uh, had a great day, and um, as did the athletes from um, across the county who came to participate. So thank you to the pool staff and community services staff who supported them and to our district um, coaches and um, players and their families. And coming up, and this is a long one, Cape Celebrates Literacy, May 6th through 11th. So thank you again to Seif who is helping to sponsor this event, but mark your calendars. It's a jam-packed week. There are a number of events occurring at each school. Um, during that week, and those are primarily school-based, so they're open to the students in the school and <coughs> to their families, and families will be invited to those. And staff um, are obviously participating, but there are evening events all week. Beginning with Monday, May 6th, we are privileged to have Jed Coffin come and speak at our high school. Um, it is more of a young adult, adult uh, audience, I would recommend for that one, but I think you will find him quite entertaining. Um, Tuesday, work in progress is an open mic night, um, so we'll keep you posted on that one. Wednesday, we'll be screening the film The Big Picture, which speaks about dyslexia, and there will be a panel discussion following that film, which includes uh, Piper Otterbein. Piper Otterbein's a senior at Cape Elizabeth High School who was recently featured in the Wall Street Journal in an article on dyslexia. If you missed that, check the archives. It's worth reading. Thursday, Susan Bennett Armistad will be speak, speaking about early literacy, and she'll be um, at the town library at 7 o'clock, actually 6.30. Friday night, we have Len Cabral, who's a famed storyteller who's worked all over the country and in some cases, <laughs> other places across the world. Uh, but he'll be giving a storytelling performance at Pond Cove um, in the um, cafetorium. And then on Saturday from 2 to 5, we are hosting at Cape Elizabeth High School an author fest. And right now, we have about three dozen authors coming from all over New England who will be signing books and selling books and visiting with children and their families. So it's going to be a great week. I know there are a number of preschool activities being hosted by the library. The Cape Elizabeth Land Trust is doing a storybook walk in Robinson Woods, and there are a number of other events occurring that week as well. So start watching for posters. There's a website you can visit, and that link will be sent out in uh, newsletters soon if you haven't already seen it. So thanks to Seif and the library, who've been working really collaboratively with us, and um, community services and the Land Trust, and everyone who's been involved with that work, and the parent associations as well. I think I'm done. Thank you. Vacation starts on Thursday, <laughs> after school. <laughs> all, right, all right, on to items, as if anybody didn't know that. <laughs> um, on to item six, new business, consideration to approve a middle school teacher job share. May I have a motion? I move that we uh, approve a middle school teacher job share request for the 2013-2014 school year. Second? I'll second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Meredith? So I'll just frame that we received a job share request from Tabitha Eastman, who's a teacher at the middle school, teaches language arts, and she has requested that she work four days a week next year and that we find um, someone to share the position at, for one day a week. And the board has the details of that proposal in their packet and had an opportunity um, to review that. 
Any discussion? Uh, yes, um, and I think uh, I continue to encourage uh, faculty to bring forward job share requests. I know one thing I look at is balancing, um, you know, the incremental benefit or can you at least maintain the level of instruction through a job share versus having, you know, continuity in the classroom. And I know um, how important it is to have continuity in the classroom and, and the challenges it is trying to have uh, one person, you know, do one day and another person do four days. And uh, for these, I always have an extremely high hurdle in terms of uh, how could it impact the student. And in this case, um, you know, I'm not convinced that, uh, you know, students' needs can, can be maintained um, given the, the arrange, arrangement that was, was proposed. Obviously, we look at these on a case-by-case -case basis, but in, in this scenario, um, I wasn't comfortable that uh, the job share request would uh, be able to maintain the, the level of instruction and uh, the continuity that's so important. So, um, and I, I'm, I'll, I'll vote when, when it's appropriate, but th those are my thoughts. Hey, David? Uh, I want to agree with Michael uh, twice in one night. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I, I think it is, a, a, I think I stated before that the presumption is mm -hmm. That, they, that it, we have to be shown that the benefits outweigh the possible risks. And I think in this case, when somebody wants a job share on a four to one basis, it just doesn't seem to make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow for continuity. It doesn't allow, um, I mean, I'm not sure what one person can do on one day. Uh, but in a nutshell, I agree with Michael. It doesn't, uh, the proposal, we looked at it, we discussed it, but it just did not seem to, uh, uh, reached the, the high threshold we put on it, so they much satisfied, excuse me. So I, I'll, I'll vote when the time comes as well. Okay. Any, any other thoughts? <coughs> I guess I... Uh, so go, hey, ahead. go ahead. Um, well, I just want to say I do so appreciate when teachers bring in um, ways that they can work home life um, and work at the same time. It's the most difficult thing for parents to um, teachers and pa parents and teachers to it's very difficult um, to say the least so I appreciate it although it doesn't I think we spent some time in the executive session going through throwing out ideas of how would it work and I also don't think um, it's going to work so I I, I share the concerns raised. I guess I would would um, also want to reiterate that we 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 do want to offer flexibility as much as we possibly can. We know that we we want people to come to work energized and enthusiastic about what they're doing, and we obviously want people, the parents, to be able to manage um, the the demands of, of being parents and also be, be being teachers in our system. So. Um, that that's important to us, but I, I share the concerns raised and would just add that um, I also think it's a challenge to hire a, a teacher for a full year at one, one day a week. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> do, you want, do you have a comment? Okay. Are there any other comments? No. I mean, I think everything's been said that yeah, I mean, my main concern was what you and Elizabeth are concerned about finding a, a teacher, a one-day teacher, um, that is at the, of the same caliber as Ms. Eastman. I think she's a she's a quality teacher, and also I do um, appreciate that she brought this to us for consideration and um, wish her the best in in working out her situation. Um, Thank you. So all those in favor, all opposed? OK. <coughs> Item B, consideration to approve a leave of absence request. I have a motion. I move we approve a leave of absence for elementary school teacher Susan Michaud for the 2012-2013 school year. Second? Second. Mary? Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Meredith? Um, so I'll just point out that Ms. Misha requested a leave from um, the remainder of the school year for uh, medical reasons. The district um, had posted for a long-term sub 
Um, and we have been able to find a candidate to serve as a long-term sub for that classroom. Um, there's currently a sub in place, and the, the candidate for the long-term sub will begin um, work, we hope, after vacation. And um, we hope that we'll provide some continuity to students and families during the remainder of their fourth grade year and as they begin the transition to fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Any comments? All those in favor? Okay, item 6C, consideration to approve athletic extracurricular staff nominations. May I have a motion? David? I, I move that we approve the athletic extracurricular staff nominations as set forth in 6C of our agenda. Second? Second. Elizabeth? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, 6D, consideration to approve the superintendent's nomination of the following people for continuing contracts. May I have a motion? I move, uh, I'll, I'll move. Okay. I move that we approve the superintendent's nominations of the following personnel to first year, um, or the first continuing contracts. And um, I guess we would just approve them. I would suggest we approve them as a slate. Second. That one. Uh, any discussion? Meredith? Just briefly to outline the process under our uh, supervision and evaluation um, procedures. All probationary staff are evaluated regularly during their first two years and moving forward that's three years of employment because there was a change in state statute which took effect at the beginning of this school year. Um, and each um, building administrator meets regularly with those probationary folks. I meet with building administrators at the end of the evaluation process to review their recommendations um, and consult with them about that, those recommendations and then um, move forward recommendations to the board. Are there any comments? I guess I have a question. Meredith, um, I, I don't know if any of these are middle school. Well, I guess I do. I can see they're middle school um, teachers. How are we doing with the change in administration in middle school? And I guess as well as in Pond Cove, does that affect the evaluation system or is there anything that needs to? Yeah, I mean, I think Doug had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Connolly um, before Mr. Connolly left about um, his evaluations and review those and um, has been able to carry on that work and um, Kelly picked up that work this fall was able to read through and review the evaluations um, th that had been completed by uh, Principal Eismeyer and um, has has kept that work going and I think it's always bumpy when those changes occur but I but I think that we have a strong faculty and um, we've had great administrators step in and um, carry on those conversations in thoughtful professional ways thank you and is in particular attention given to evaluations around this group of people in that they're moving on to continuing contract that's correct okay are there any other questions or comments all those in favor Six zero. Item E, another list of nominations. May I have a motion? Yes, I move that we approve the superintendent's nomination of the following personnel to second year probationary contracts as listed in the packet under item 6E. Second, David, uh, Meredith, or? So uh, as I mentioned briefly, the, the, the process is similar. These are probationary employees. These are all people who are in their first year with the district. If you'll remember, the statute changed. Um, again, went into effect for this academic year. That teachers hired at the beginning of this academic year would have three probationary years before decisions are made regarding continuing contracts. So these teachers have each completed one year and will be moving into their second year uh, if these nominations are approved. Mm -hmm. David? Um, Meredith, I, I, I'm not sure about all schools, but there is more than just uh, principal evaluations. There's, isn't there other things uh, that we do to make sure teachers, I mean, they discuss it with other people and so forth? Yeah, I mean, I, I think certainly administrators are very 
mindful of feedback that comes from a variety of sources, whether that be team leaders and department chairs, from parents, from students as well, um, and certainly from um, you know other other administrative <coughs> colleagues. So there's definitely ongoing dialogue, and and these are decisions we take very seriously. These are you know when you make a decision to bring someone forward and keep them on a continuing contract, it's it has to be because you believe they are the best and because they are going to contribute to your school community for an extended period of time and they are going to make a difference in student learning. Thank you. A positive difference, I should say. Any other comments? All those in favor? Okay, item F. Uh, and Joe's not here, so maybe Elizabeth will take this. Um, do we approve them at a second reading? So we would yes. consider them. For approval. Correct. All right. So I move we approve the following policies for second reading as listed in 6F of tonight's packet. Second. I'll second. Okay, and Mary. Uh, any discussion? David? Uh, just to, be, to clarify, we're, we're approving a whole slate is set forth now for a second reading, and we're recommending for deletion. Several. Um, looks like four policies is listed on the agenda. Uh, I'm asking on your behalf if that is would that be a friendly is, amendment to. to oh, is that I a agree. friendly amendment? I approve. Elizabeth? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Mary? Absolutely. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm. I'm trying are there to any questions about the policy? <laughs> because I'm, He's having I can't hear. Um, are there any questions about the policy? No. No. I would like to say it is good to see that we're actually making our policy manual book thinner mm -hmm. uh, through deletions. I know it's. I'd like to thank the policy committee because I know these are. Uh, it's very time consuming and it can be very challenging. To, you know, to, to eliminate one because you're always concerned about what are we, what are we missing. But I think, um, in the name of efficiency and understandability, if that's even a word, um, I'm happy that you continue to go through it and, and do that. So thank you. I'll just share that um, we have the ones that are sort of easy to delete tend to be ones that are law, and so they don't need to be represented in the policy manual and as laws. So those can be the ones. There have been times when we've tried to perhaps um, turn two policies into one, and that doesn't always work out because it's really tricky. So it is, it's still an ongoing process. We appreciate your support. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion as amended? Let's go. OK. Item G. Uh, the policies for first read. We don't even have to make a motion on that one. Okay. All right. So these are the policies in front of the board for first read. Um, I would encourage board members to um, offer comments on them well in advance of the next policy meeting, which is the first Monday of the month. Which happens to be Monday, May 4th. Monday, May 4th. So if you can give the policy committee chair, Joe Morrissey, a week to incorporate any comments you might have on these um, policies, then uh, that gives the policy committee a much better chance of, of actually being able to incorporate your feedback. And I will just note a number of policies are recommended for deletion um, that are financially related <coughs> policies or guidelines. And most of those are. Um, already required by our auditors. So it's redundant to have them in the policy manual, or they are procedural um, pieces that the business office has already put in place, and they would remain in place um, and can be updated at the recommendation of the business administrator um, rather than going through the board approval process. Thank you for that. Uh, which brings us to 6H. The consideration to approve a new personnel nomination. May I have a motion? Yes, I move that we approve a new personal nomination, personnel nomination for 2013-2014. Can you be more specific? Uh, 
Dr. Michael Tracy. Tracy. No, I apologize. I move that we approve uh, the pers personal nomination of Dr. Michael Tracy for middle school principal for 2013-2014. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, discussion? David? I just, I don't want to discuss it again. I just want to point out to the public that we discussed this at length. We reviewed resumes, recommendations um, uh, were made and evaluated. Um, um, it was put together a long screening process, advertised, and um, um, a lot of work was done by the, the committee to find this person. It came to us unanimously recommended by the committee. Uh, the person's um, background and uh, qualifications are outstanding, and uh, I just want the public to know there was a lot of work and time and effort was put into it, and we think we've come up with a great candidate. Thank you. I have a question, Mary? actually. Yeah. Um, will there be an opportunity for the public and the board to meet this person before July? <laughs> so let me back up <laughs> and first um, just say there is a committee of a dozen people, uh, middle school faculty um, primarily as well as two school board members, um, Kate and Joe who's not here this evening, and two parents from the middle school who are part of um, this process from reviewing applications through uh, selecting candidates, conducting interviews, um, site visit, um, and bringing forward this nomination. And I'm, I'm pleased to nominate Michael. I think he will be a great addition, not only to the middle school, but to our K-12 administrative team. I think he brings a real enthusiasm for middle level learning and a strong instructional leadership background. I think um, the committee felt he represented the qualities that they were looking for. And I think he will um, be able to work really effectively um, with our faculty and with the students in our uh, middle school. Um, he also um, was um, praised for his work as a collaborative K-12 leader um, who views his district as a pre-K, excuse me, not to bring that up again, but as a pre-K-12 district and who, um, while he is a strong advocate for his own building, recognizes um, the need for a district to work collaboratively to best meet the needs of students. Um, I will hope that we have a chance to bring him forward for a community visit sometime before July 1st, and I certainly can um, try to make arrangements with him to do that and, and work with the faculty to identify um, and the parents' association to identify appropriate times um, to do that. I know we've done that in the past. I think it's very helpful for, for parents and for, you know, particularly um, parents in leadership positions in the parents' association to have a chance to, to uh, get to know someone a little early. And um, the candidate visited our school last week, and board members from the Parents Association were part of the group that met with um, the candidate on that day. So I'm sure they would be willing to help organize um, a meet and greet. That would be great. I just want to add my thanks to the, to the um, parents, teachers, administrators, and board members who participated in the, in the search process. There was a lot of work uh, put into the process. It always takes an awful lot of, of the, the um, volunteer time of those folks, and, and um, I appreciate that work very much. Um, so all those in favor? Item 7, committee reports. Do we have any committee reports? Uh, we do, actually. We uh, completed the budget review, and tomorrow night uh, we'll, the chair of the Finance Committee will present to the town council, and I heard from some citizens that there was some confusion um, on the ordering of it. I know that they were citizens and or citizens who wanted to comment on the school budget could have made comments at Monday's meeting, and I spoke to a, a town councilor, and there will be a future opportunity if, can, if citizens want to make comments on the budget at a future uh, town council meeting. So if, if you want to know that day, look on the town council schedule. So I just wanted to, to clarify there will be an opportunity to, to, to comment on it. And tomorrow, um, the meeting, I believe, is at 7 o'clock. And hopefully, we'll be done by 8.30. And then the next step would be uh, to wait for the town council's decision on it. And then um, then ultimately, it would go uh, to, to the uh, 
the public for, for a vote. So that, that just wanted to update everyone on, on the schedule. Thank you, Michael. Can, um, John, can you remind us what that date for the public vote is? Yeah, I think it's May 8th. May 13th? 14th? May 14th, Tuesday. Sorry, May 14th. Tuesday, May 14th is the, is the budget vote. Okay, great. And the town council vote will be Thursday, is that right? You know? Uh, no, I, I'm not sure of the date. I know they're finalizing it, so the, they would be posted on the, uh, the town council website, the okay. calendar, so. Okay. There's a meeting posted for Thursday, but I'm not sure if that is it's the final date. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, on to item eight, school board agenda requests. I, I can save mine, but I, I neglected I'm sorry, something you had a during report? my prior report. Okay. Um, so, sorry to back up to that. I know um, there was an article recently in the Courier regarding the school resource officer position, right. and I oh. uh, had intended to speak to this during my superintendent's report and was so caught up in the kindergarten that I just flew right by that in my notes. Um, but, uh, let me start at the beginning. So our district emergency management committee um, had discussed a school resource officer position um, over the course of this year. And when we talked about security updates back in January, that was one of the items we mentioned that was still under discussion. Um, when we um, t talked about it further as a committee, we felt that it was something that has potential benefits for Cape Elizabeth. And um, through discussions with Chief Williams, neither of us prioritized it for our budgets. Neither the school department prioritized it as a budget item for this coming year, nor did the police department prioritize it as a budget item for this coming year. But we were aware in January that there, were, that there was a likelihood, based on the State of the Union address, that there might be some grants forthcoming. And um, I, I think really as a result of that, we wanted to be proactive in, in um, bringing forward the conversation. Um, Chief Williams feels strongly that that position should be a um, police department employee and um, for a variety of reasons which I'm sure he can articulate better than I, I will and I won't, I won't speak for him um, on those points but um, because this is something that I, I think is a larger topic and merits further discussion I would suggest that we have some further discussion about it as a board at an upcoming workshop and can decide whether or not um, this is something that seems appropriate for this community moving forward. Um, no grants have been posted as of yet. Um, and, you know, certainly I think it's, it's not something the Emergency Management Committee would have recommended if they didn't see, um, you know, some potential benefits for this position. But, but I think it's a, it's a community conversation. So I would recommend we add it to a workshop agenda. Um, and we could do that this month if that made sense for the board. I think that makes sense. I, I mean, being part of the old guard, I haven't heard a word about kindergarten, but <laughs> I've heard a lot about the high school and the potential of that position and concern from parents about that. So I think um, the sooner we can get that um, on an agenda for our, um, so the board can weigh in and, and the public can too, I think that's a good idea. So the, the, probably the reason that we haven't addressed that at this point is that it, is that We've been preoccupied with the budget, and this isn't a budget item. Right. Um, but it sounds like we will have an opportunity to to get into the issue a little bit more deeply. And we have heard, we've also heard as a board from members of the public on the issue. So I know it's something that people care a lot about. We're happy to hear from people uh, who have strong feelings about the subject. Uh, David? I just want to make it clear to the public, because I thought the, the news article implied that, that the school board might have been considered. We, we haven't considered it yet. We don't know anything about it yet. It was a committee set up that came up with the idea for consideration. And I want the public to understand we haven't considered it yet. And we will in a, it's not in our budget. It's nothing approved. We don't, I, I don't have any specific knowledge about it one way. I don't think the board does. Um, but it's, it's something that I think should at least be discussed. Um, and we'll discuss it, uh, but it's not something, I just want to clear up, that I haven't read the article myself, I, I thought it, it sounded, though, it at least could lead someone who didn't read it carefully with the idea that we as a school board were already considering it when we haven't even uh, discussed the issue yet. 
So I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you for that agenda request. <laughs> <laughs> for proposal. <laughs> uh, announcements of upcoming meetings. You've already announced tomorrow night's meeting with the, um, with the town council. Technology will be April 25th at 3 o'clock. Okay. Thank you. And again, <laughs> policy 7.30 a.m. Monday, May 6th. It would be nice if you would move that earlier in the morning, actually. <laughs> that was my I tried to get it at 6.30 a.m. <laughs> I can actually I make it from the earlier. <laughs> Uh, item 10, may I have a motion, please? I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? All right, thank you very much.